Hi, this is Joe, and I have put in the blog that I was going to do a room tour of the room I'm working on. That will be the guest bedroom. So I'm standing in that right now. Bridget and I just finished doing the skim coat as a two-person team. And um, I'm going to kind of give you the tour of the room as it is. Now, the assignment is... If, and I, ultimately the room will not have the stuff we use during construction in it. The assignment is, if you had this room and it was your guest bedroom and you needed to furnish it and set it up so that it looked inviting and pleasant to be in, what would you do to it or whatever? Now it's not entirely finished here. Most likely the thing will be dry by tomorrow because the sheet, the mudding we did today was the skim coat which is a thin coat of mud here so we start with this one which is the south facing or the southern wall of it big expanse of sheetrock and if we go down here you can see it's actually I think it turned out super now at the bottom there's there's the floor there is plaster stuck on the floor. That's going to be easy to clean off, um, which we'll do. And then up on the edges here, the wall and the ceiling did not form a tight joint for various reasons. I'm going to put crown molding there so you won't see it. Now it has the foamed in insulation in it, but we stuck this pink stuff to fill that space and to at least slow the mice down when they appear. So the first thing we have is this wall is something like 15 feet long and um, it's a big blank space and uh, we'll, it's practically dry right now. On the corner we might put some bead molding around that beam that's there. Need to touch that up. It's a complete blank slate. And we have one window and the window does not have trim on it yet. Uh, which that will be one of the goals and so that's the absolutely new uh, sheetrock that we did here now this thing had had some plaster and some beaver board but it also had some sheetrock on this other side and also on the ceiling and the sheetrock on the ceiling uh, seems to be fastened to plywood behind it. This is a mystery, but the seams were poorly done and we put up the mesh tape and then we redid them. And actually I think it turned out pretty well up there. You can see two different colors now. They had a wood stove uh, for years and years and I think that discolored the old sheetrock. But ultimately, we're going to paint this in a nice, pleasant ivory white, and the whole thing will be brighter. One of the neat things is the electricity works, and so all of the lights are plugged into outlets in the room. But it's a long, narrow room. It's about 8 feet and 6 inches wide, and that's it. Now, I don't think I'm going to have a ceiling light where that old one was because I'm going to have difficulty fishing the wire out. Whatever I do for the for wired in lights will probably be with conduit, not the favorite, but it's I might either run conduit up across the ceiling and then have one or two fixtures hanging down, but then I was thinking I might just run conduit across and have some indirect lighting sconces on the wall. Uh, that would also provide a lot of light in here without seeming to be too bright. The difficulty here is for quite a bit of the year there is no direct sunlight into this room and it's dark. It's great if you want to sleep late in the morning but it's not bright enough. That door goes to a closet. Now we get to the other end which you can see here. The thing about the other end is that's still unfinished. And there are several thoughts here. One is I left that unfinished because I'm going to have to have a switch to whatever light we have. But then in this corner over here, 
it's unfinished because that's going to be a transit area for electrical wiring that comes up to the cellar and ends up going up into the second floor. And the yellow wire is wire that I installed. Um, and you can see it goes off to the left and that serves the outlets in here. Um, and then, but the older wire there is like all turned off, but we just haven't removed it yet because we need to know where it goes. Uh, now, one of the things I'm thinking of doing is about 15 feet in, I'm thinking of putting a partition here with an inside door so that from here over is actually not in the bedroom and then the bedroom is in the sheetrock part and then I'll build a partition here and we'll add that so that there will be four finished walls because I'm just not ready to finish these walls like this until I get more of the other electric go that's going in other directions done. Even when I'm done, I'm not going to close this up. I'm going to leave it as some sort of closet so we can access all the wiring that's traveling through the wall. One of the mysteries that was here before was some of the wiring disappeared into the ceiling of the cellar and emerged on the second floor but we don't know what it where it went in between and that's bad you have to know where your wiring is at all times I think and so that's it it's still kind of in a blank stage but essentially I think the skim coat looks great and our plan is if it's dry tomorrow which it's thin enough and, and what have you we'll actually paint the ceiling and the walls and go from there and then I'll do the trim put in the partition we'll actually fix up the floor paint the floor and then ultimately install some furniture here now the other thing here has been and it has been rainy on and off so this might not be the best test but I bought a humidifier so I've had the humidifier on and in the 24 hours since I bought it I've emptied it twice 15 pipes each time and it makes a huge difference in the humidity and all the stuff dries faster than it would have otherwise but so that's what it looks like I'll catch you later